Hi guys, it's Moz here from Moz6510 Models, a channel dedicated to help you become a better scale modeler. Good evening, I've got a guest on tonight called Baggies TMD. Hello Baggies. I'm very well, thank you yourself. How you doing there, Moz? What got you into model kit building then? What was your uh, um, real take on the model kits? Uh, to be fair, I used to do airfix kits years ago as a kid, mm. but I had some stress at work. And I just needed a way of just uh, getting getting my head straight. So I just brought a cheap Hawker kit and 172nd, the starter kit, and started from there. Brilliant. So you've built this one before, have you? Uh, not this Hawker Demon. No. No, it was the uh, Red Arrows Hawker. Oh, fair but... enough. Fair play. Um, so we this came about in a conversation. I I saw your channel... And I said, if there's any time you want to collab, we'll collab. And you said, yeah, when you get a mod. I think it was that um, Jumbo Jet, wasn't it? You put out your um, complete uh, stash, didn't you? And there was a certain plane you had in that oh, stash. Yeah. And then um, I did a review on this, and you said, um, you've got one of these as well. Why don't we do a collab and see if we can get a, a YouTube a video and build this together? And I thought, what a great idea. So... Um, after messing about with technology, I think we're almost there. If the sound quality isn't that good, I do apologise. But it's we're, we're, we're all amateurs, aren't we? <laughs> we're all amateurs. So um, I know it says Dan the Mocker Man is in the live chat. Hello, Dan. Good evening to you. Um, we've got eight people watching. So if the eight want to say hello in the chat, that'd be really good. So um, I guess then what we need to do is actually start building the plane, I think. Um, but I want to just say a little secret. I actually started this. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you what I've done is, um, cause I saw it. I, I, all I've done to it, this is when I had it in there. I have actually just sprayed the inside. So when we put it together, it should be pretty much okay. If you see what I mean, you know, it's, um, I've just, um, give it a quick cup of, um, cop, I think that's cop pit green because the in the model it does say that the inside has to be cockpit green but everything else is all silver if i'm right in saying so how far have you got in your kit have you just got it still on the sprues mine is mine is fresh in the box the only thing that's happened is i've done an inbox review that's it, it, is it? That is right it. well get your kit out there <laughs> let's see what you've got in your kit and hopefully it should be the same as mine i'm hoping so <laughs> Oh, there we go. Um, oh, what's that in the bottom there? Oh, I've got a figure. And there we are. I've got... I'll tell you what, in all fairness, the um, the decals on this are sublime, aren't they? They do look incredible. They yeah, do, they do don't they? Nice. Are they? Are they? Is that, well, is that the company? Is it Cartograph they use? Is it Cartograph or Car... Car... I think Test... Yeah, I, I think Testers... Testers use Cartograph as well. And did Dota Taliari use Cartograph? Uh, I think everyone started to use it now. They're meant to be about the best in the business, yeah, aren't they? So. That's it. Yeah, I think so. So, uh, let's see. Um, well, I've got three sprues. You must have three sprues as well. Uh. Yeah, I've sort of got a pile of bits. Where's your uh, canopy? Does it come I'm joking. Canopy? I just thought... Oh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You've done an inboxer review as well, so surely it's... Uh... <laughs> oh, I've got like 80, 80 kits sat in the stash that I keep pulling out to have a look yeah, at. Yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I keep buying them. I keep buying them. I'm, I'm still looking at that mini. I've got a mini art here that I'm. Well, I've got two. I've got um, an SU85 and an Avro671, and uh, I keep looking at it and I'm thinking, do I do I build one of these? And but I know that if I start it, it's going to be like a two month project. Easy as the, you know. Well, I've, I've just finished uh, that. The vampire. have you got it there? Have you? I've literally just finished. I put it on the camera. Yeah, I've just finished that yesterday. Yeah. I did, and then I started them early. Yeah. For my troubles. That looks nice, actually. I'm just looking now. Yeah, that does look really nice. Um, 
So apart from the fact the canopies have had a little bit of fogging from uh, the mask guard. From the mask guard? It gave it... Yeah, it, it dried a bit funny, I think, on it. It's made a bit of a mark, but ah, nothing a bit of a toothpaste. You don't think... Yeah. Um... You know, there's a reaction to the to some sort of chemical that was on because I've never known Masco to do that. If you know what I mean, you know, I've never known Masco to um, to make any marks on canopy before. To be fair, my mask oh, was, was old. And it got a bit, it got yeah. a bit gloopy, so I was, I was risking it Oh, I see. It fair anyway. enough. I but got um, somebody put in one of the groups um, that they use uh, PVA glue. And what they do is they dabble it on with a cocktail stick and they break the surface tension of the canopy, of the glue, onto the canopy. And apparently that just peels right off. It's quite nice, actually, apparently. It's a really good, really good um, effect, you know, to protect the to protect the canopy. It's using PVA glue. I've not tried it, but I will do. Um, I took, yeah. Oh, but I say, I've, my mask will here, you know, I've had it for ages. I give it a good shake and uh, it works quite well. I would love to know what's actually in it. I'd love to know the actual what's actually in Masco, because I think you can do better. And and also just change the colour. That'll be better, wouldn't it? <laughs> um, in the chat we've got David Ravenscroft. Good evening, sir. Stuart Tucker. Good evening from the southwest. Um, Dan the Mocker Man. He's also in. And James Moa. He's also in as well. Welcome to the chat. This is a build off, not really speed. But we thought we'd build a model together, and uh, we're going to. I've um, I've cheated already um, because in the in the on the box there, if you can see that, it does say that number seventy eight is used in the cockpit. And when I first started thinking about building it, I did spray it ready so that it's. Uh, but it will need a good clean up because there was a bit of overspray there. But yeah, I suppose we better start. And I suppose the first thing we have to do is put the propeller together. Right. Let's go then. Right, let's find the instructions. Yeah. Do you um when you build a kit, uh, baggies? Do you um do you make it so the propeller spins, or do you not bother? Uh, it depends how much glue I put on it. <laughs> that's a that's a fair shout, actually, mate. That's a fair shout. It's a very with this one. I might actually put the propeller on last. Yeah. Well, can you? Yeah, you can actually because you can put the pin inside, can't you? And glue the pin. Yeah. Should be all right. Close that up. Right. Bit of tidy up needed. Oh, face off. Let's have a look. Quite a bit of flash on this kit as well, isn't there? Oh, just a tad. Not as bad as the Catalina I've got to do. Is that a bad one, is it? Oh, there's more flash than actual uh, model. <laughs> is there really? What age is that yeah. one then? Oh, I, I think it's an old kit. It was a second hand one when I brought yeah. it, but the amount of flash, I mean, all the flash is sort of a good two or three mil around most of the Really? Parts. Yeah. Sounds like one of those uh, one off kits that they do, you know, those um, injection molding kits. A lot of people are complaining about them, saying, oh, they're yeah. rubbish, but they're supposed to be. There's no, there's only outside detail, there's not inside detail because they're one offs, aren't they? You'll never see them made again. Mm. At the end of the day, we're all modellers, so a little bit of flash. It is, is most definitely, yeah. But, like, you know, you, you hear, you see it on other people that they they yeah. expect the kit to be perfect, don't they? And to be fair, we have been pretty lucky that a lot of kits now are pretty well made so that there's not a lot of flash on any of it. Back in the days, you know, when, you know, when, when, when frog kits came out of Russia, Nova... The flash on that was incredible. Can't beat a frog kit though. I do like I do like my frog kits. Oh, just uh, I've just got a, ma a matchbox kit on the way that I won oh, the other day. I, I can't remember which kit it is. Uh, the Wellingborough. Yeah. I can't remember. I've looked on my phone, but I can't remember. I've put my phone now. Oh, well, it's some weird, it's some weird bomber from yeah. between the two world wars. Stuart Tucker's just Stuart Tucker's put nice. on the uh, chat that we've got nice tidy benches. You can only see 
the screen. You can't see on the outside of the screen, lads, I can assure you. <laughs> oh, yeah, pretty much. A, I can tell you now, there's a pile yeah. of stuff to the right of me on the floor. Uh, the amount of paints that are on the coffee <laughs> yeah. table is unbelievable. I was only saying to my missus the other night, because um, um, we moved into this house three years ago, um, the... Um, I've got, you know, I decided I was going to put the air, air booth somewhere else and I put it in the conservatory and we've had the conservatory rebuilt because the old one was about to collapse on us when we bought the house. We knew it needed to be done anyway. But um, we uh, we kind of, um, I've set up the airbrush in, the, in that room. So most of my paints now are in the conservatory out the way and it does make for a tidier workshop to do it that way, if you know what I mean. Just get everything out the way all done and dusted and um so i do all the modeling in here then i go out there and do my airbrushing but when i do want to do some hand painting i have got a tray in my toolbox on my right if you want to see the video it's called repurposing my workbench on youtube and um i put it i put all me me paints in there so all i gotta do is reach over into the drawer pull it out take the one i want then put it back again when i don't need it but what I tend to do is, is I get a collection on my workbench here, as <laughs> I, you know, I forget that I need to um, um, put them away, and then those often I whack them all away, and then I realise I just put the one the way that I need, if you know what I mean. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm going to put the pilots in last. I think you can get the pilots in last, here, can't you? On this one, I think you can. Who's pouring the whiskey out in on the lice? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'll be black in there, that'll do. Let's see how good of a fit it is now. <laughs> it's not that good to be fair, I've just had a look now, it needs a lot of work. Um can't be no bad as the Vulcan. Well, was that a queen filler, isn't it? Uh, I've, I've got one of the old ones. It's currently sat in a box because I got bored of putting filler is in it. Is it really that bad, is it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Where's that pin to? Where's that gone? There it is, number one. Tiny pin, isn't it, for the uh, propeller? Let's do that. Right. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think I'll glue him in. It's in there. I was talking to oh, a, the... I was talking to a chap the other day, and um, he was saying to me that one of the at the at the, the old model shop it was at, it was at a toy fair actually, and uh, he was talking to me, and he said that the the biggest change in building models is this Tamiya extra thin glue. He said it was oh, it's... It's a game changer. Oh, it's a revelation. This stuff is yeah. <laughs> I'll take it all over your fingers. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> oh. When you get it on your fingers and you don't realise and you pick up the model and you leave a print, that is a killer, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> you die, don't you? You die and go to hell. You're like, oh. And you get really, really, really upset with it as well. Oh, I remember. I remember picking it. I picked this up at Bolton at the start of the what, year. What the? Yeah. Nice demons. Oh, 
I thought I'd pick a, pick a vintage classic up. So I want to pick up another Dominoi when it comes out. So I've built I've built one, but it was the had the old decals on yeah. it and it just fell apart. Oh, so decals, yeah. So I want to painful. <laughs> yeah. So I'm hoping I'm hoping to pick one up that's got the new the newer uh, yeah. decals in it. I tell you, some of the aftermarket stuff now is amazing, isn't it, when it comes to decal sheets and stuff. You can have anything you want if you really go looking for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I tend to be a modeler. Yeah. I am. Do but you not, no, no photo etch here then? Because I, I, I think photo etch is just, just I, I just don't see the point in photo etch. I've I'm a member of the five eighty model club and we we go to a few shows yeah. and one of the one of the chaps who's been modelling for years like you work on the two foot rule if it looks good from two foot away. Yeah. Which when you're at when you're at an exhibit, most of the people are looking about two foot away. As long as it looks good from about two foot away, you're all right. You're right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but uh majority of my cockpits in my planes are either grey or black. They are because the size of the windows on a one seventy second scale. Yeah. Wayne, you ain't gonna see. You ain't gonna see inside. No, that's right. It's, it's probably me being a lazy modeler, but that's, that's that's how I work. Well, I I've always said, you know, and I've said it quite a few times on this on the videos that I've done and on the chat. If you can't see it, I don't do it. You know, it's like you see these people who put copper wiring all down the back and everything next thing you need to put the fuselage together and you never see it again <laughs> you know it is you know what i mean you know it's yeah. uh that's an interesting question dave um i've been watching vids on restoring matchbox dinky corgi models two questions has anybody done that and if and do they think they're a bit of a cheat to the original models well um I know a chap who collects dinky cars and he says that if you do restore them, you lose any value in the car. They, you know, they, a lot of people collect them with the dinks and with the chocolate stains left on them. Do you know what I mean? Um, I've, I have tried to in the past. Um, I had a, 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 a space explorer, um, BP explorer, like the three wheels on it or six wheels. And I did get the stickers for that, and I did put the model in um, Nitro Moss, but I never got any further to that. Um, I never done anything more with it, I don't think. <coughs> I've still got the um, the stickers there on my dad's. Are they here? Yeah. <clears throat> So I've still got these stickers there. These are the BP Exploration stickers that I got online. I only cut the quid, but I never actually got any further to put in that model back together or spraying it or anything. I haven't really bothered. Um, so, well, that's that bit done. I'll leave that to dry. Let's have a crack at these uh, wings. I know, I was watching a video the other day on you, uh, Facebook, yeah. same sort of thing, a, a chap had got yeah. an old Tonka toy to restore, and he like, stripped it all down, I was like, oh, I was going to hand paint it, but he powder coated it, it was like, this Tonka toy is probably from the 50s, powder coated like, it, wouldn't no. powder coated it back then, yeah. it had some lead based paint and slapped <laughs> yeah, on probably the right. paint brush. Actually, it probably been dipped, to be fair, wouldn't it? It would have been dipped. Uh, yeah. You know, so we use, we use powder coating stuff. I was like, yeah. Yeah, if you're going to do it, at least it right. do it sort of. <laughs> Modern technology. Yeah. When we were all 3, 3D printing well, our own models. Well, I think that will be the thing, wouldn't it? I think that will be, if they can get it, I think that will be the end of Airfix. Because what they would do is you would just be able to go online and buy the CAD drawings for a fiver and then you just build your own. But they've never got the 3D to be as good as as a as a as a you know model you know injected mold in it, you know. But 
could be a way a lot cheaper because you wouldn't have to develop your temp you wouldn't have to develop the um the tooling will you that is true there's a guy on uh, is it cheap um cheap train models or something and they print off um 3d uh train stuff don't they uh yeah i've i've dabbled in it a little bit with a mate of mine who's doing a, doing a few little bits yeah. and bobs but I was, I, I, he was doing all the drawings and that, and I was just pasting him because uh, it's technology and I can't get on with technology. But you're a plumber, aren't you? Uh, yeah, plumber, gas engineer. Yeah, so... Give me, uh, give me a boiler and I'll strip it down into component parts for you, but give me uh, a laptop and I ain't the foggy spot going on with you. But surely, the, with, with the way of the world now, a lot of boilers now are so in with the technology, aren't they? Because you can pick out your phone and just... Um, and just... Um, change the settings while you're in the car can't you uh to be you can on some of them the majority of the boilers uh so i work a lot of social housing yeah. boilers so they're all sort of mid-range okay. boilers but uh always always love it when you get to an house i've had a look on google and it's saying this so i've done this and now it doesn't work anymore it's like yeah don't <laughs> <go> on google <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I bet it's like doctors, isn't it? You know, oh, I think I've got cancer because on yeah. Google it says if you get a spot on your ass and it's two inches, you know what I mean? I've yeah. got cancer. Doctors like don't bother. I, I used to be terrible. I said because when it first came out, you had was it med? Oh no, mddoc.com or something, wasn't it? It was web based doctor, and you were put in all these symptoms, and it would come back with a thousand and one things it could be but top of the list was cancer you know <laughs> what i mean and you'd be like oh i've got cancer <laughs> yeah got this big list of things like you know I, I collapsed on the football pitch last wednesday oh you got lung cancer next option did you drink enough you know what i mean it's it's terrible oh, really okay. When I went to one the other day, so I thought I've got no pressure. So I, I went on Google and I, I turned these two black taps, and but mm. it didn't put any water in my boiler. I was like, "Have you connected the pipe that needs to go on?" <laughs> I, Google didn't tell me that. Bit. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, <laughs> what you want to say is um, that's all right, love. That's you know, I'll put the pipe on for you. It's hundred and twenty quid call out fee. <laughs> <laughs> I have to suggest that to my gaffers on. Yeah. <laughs> <Is> you... <laughs> oh. Yeah, put that through there. Come on, I'm spending more time sanding. I feel like I feel like a carpenter tonight, I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, luckily it's yeah. sort of ribs the back is, isn't it? So it don't matter. A bit of a line on it. I'm going around the edge, um, and when I've gone over it with the with, with the um, sand stick, it's thinned it enough so it just peels off. If you know what I mean, just coming ah, yeah. up, you know, you know. Uh, you know I'll tell you me. what, mate. Go I've on got, Flories. Got... I think and get the beginner set or the basic set where you get every single one of them. These last because even though that's dirty. What you gotta do is wipe it on your trousers and it becomes clean again. It's these these last for ages. They are very they're worth the weight and gold, these things. Since I saw somebody with them at a trade show or a, um, a, a model show, I've um I bought a set off Floyd models and they're absolutely fantastic. You know, they even go down to being thin like this. Look how thin that is, you know, it's absolutely you know, incredibly thin. Um, yeah, I'll have to have a look at that. I, I did look at that sanding stick you got the other day. The uh, the, oh, flexi, the, fle the flexi stick, the one file. Off, oh, off, yeah, uh, crumbs. Yeah, it looks yeah. a bit like it's natural. Have a look at them, mate. They they are they are phenomenal. It's yeah, phenomenal. I, I use that one quite a bit. Actually, saying that, what have I done with it? It's here somewhere on my in my desk. Yeah, you grab that out, mate. Doing, doing fuselages and stuff is a dream. No flat spots of that, mate, because you, you squeeze it, if you know what I mean, and it gives it a curve. Yeah, I could probably do that. I'm doing an Atelier uh, C-130J Hercules at the moment, and I've got a reprofile the top. When you bring the two halves together, it sort of yeah. leaves a bit of a well. And the amount of filler I've had to put in to make it round yeah. again, just to... 
sort of round, yeah. round just, the old uh, looking back on there. the chat and um, going back so um Stuart writes uh, my dinky's got lost a long time ago <laughs> um and david said i found you the stickers on ebay yeah i did find them you did didn't you yeah um that's right dave yeah that's right yeah you did you found me those stickers um i mean for me it's the thought of knowing that the wire is there and photo etch is there that's history and scale yeah i can see that point when you do build a kit as the model builder you know what you've done to that kit and so you can be proud of it but i still but i thought the idea is art of art is that you know that people admire it for the way it looks so if you can spend more time doing that on what can be seen then what because you, you can tell them oh he's got wires in there but nobody would appreciate it but you i don't know it's a weird one isn't it i can see the point um stuart uh david ravenscroft just that just that when i see them they paint they put on sometimes it's so thick it doesn't look right no it doesn't stuart taylor tucker writes if it's an expensive kit then i may go all out yeah fair enough History and Scale says, I've tried 3D printing my own kits, but it's not yet at the stage where it's able to print kits. It leaves print lines all along the parts. That's a fair shout. And David writes again, the 3D printers get really cheap. That could be the way forward. Yeah. Yeah, it could be, you know. And I suppose then, once you've already got the model, you wouldn't have to have a 172 scale, 148 scale, or 135 scale. You would just blow up the picture and print it for the size that you want so you wouldn't need to have them made either you make them yourself yeah it's an idea <clears throat> it's quite untidy in there actually get that good clean out and get the knife on that uh, i think i'd get shot if i uh try to print out a uh one thirty second scale um, <laughs> I think if whatever happens, it will come to the One. train side first, won't it? If they 3D print, they will, it will come yeah, to the I train mean... side first or um, or the, uh, remotely, you know, the RC guys, because they'll probably want to print cogs and stuff, won't they? They want, you know, for us, it's more of a, you know, I think that's where, that's where most of the work will be done is in that area, I think. I mean, uh, I've, I mean I've been doing model railways yeah. now for probably 20 years. And the development of the model railways over the past 20 years yeah. is ridiculous. I mean, there's, there is companies out there now who are doing uh, 3D, uh, 3D bits and bobs. Like there's a company now you can buy a little 170 second uh, yes. trailer generator. It's just like 3D printed. There's a company doing um, O scale, so yeah. bigger than double O. Uh, Wagons that are all 3D printed as well. The amount of detail in them is just ridiculous. But uh, the, the manufacturers are starting to mm. do it as well as, as when they're bringing out their new their new yeah. uh, locos like Hornby Batman. They'll do a 3D printed version first, so just to show off when you're at yeah. the shows, like look what we've got. In our, in our 3D printer. I also, I think, uh, in all fairness, I think what, what you'll see more of now will be, um, you know, the at the moment, the big thing is that um, laser cutting, where they laser cut wood, and you can, you know, I think that's where the market's going for, for that. If you want to make your own kit model out of wood, you would buy the kit and you have a laser cutter and you cut it on the laser because the prices are going down every single month. You know, I've been keeping an eye on the laser cutters, um you know i've seen you know that that thing that we got the ebma aircraft stand that's all cut by laser isn't it you know oh yeah and that technology is being yeah. used in creating these flat bits of wood that you can make uh, leonardo's clock in and stuff like that you know it's uh that's all coming around but i think yeah 3d printing i think if that comes well i think we'll start there'll be people who'll be making the money selling the um the designs for or the autocad designs whatever it's called the cad designs for the kits i think that's where we end up and would air fit what would airfix do then you know that is true but there's always going to be the people who want to buy yeah manufacturer. but they're going to have to do a lot that's more than what they're doing now you know you know one thing I found about Airfix, and I'm not, there's no disrespect to Airfix, is that there is no real 
proper communication between them and the fans, if you know what I mean. It's the social media, the Twitter account is dreadful. You write a comment on the Twitter account, they never respond, they never retweet your comment or nothing, you know. It's uh, there's no real en engagement. You know, I, I really do feel that going down the route of another Spitfire is, is a bad move. You know, there's so many kits up there we want. Why why release another another Mark V Spitfire? You know, it's... Uh... I mean, the problem with the problem with Hornby, I mean, Airfix is part of the Hornby group. And oh, sorry, I've been a model yeah. highway as well. Um, so I've gone for, went through a phase of having... It was management who didn't quite know what people wanted so we're just churning out the same stuff over yeah. and over again now Hornby Hornby's new manager is the same bloke who who owns Oxford Broadcast yeah. so he's Hornby sort of flipping round now they're starting to listen to the pe uh, listen to uh, the public I mean like this year they've introduced the Intercity APT I know for a fact that Years and years, people have been asking for a more modern yeah. version of APT. So ho hopefully, what now Hornby is sort of coming over the peak yeah. of being rubbish and a, a sort of finding the way. Hopefully, it will filter down to both Airfix, Scalex, yeah. Corgi. So, like I say, look, look, you can do this because we're managing to do it. I mean, every show. Uh, every, like Warley at the NEC, yeah. the big train show. You go, you go there. You have uh, Simon, yeah. Simon Collier, I think his name is, who's like one of the main blokes in Hornby. Uh, I think his name is Lyndon, yeah. who's the managing director. Are there? And the amount of people who are going up to him and just saying, "We want one of these," and they're like, "Yep, yeah, no worries." And you, I say, you're just starting to see that stuff. Yeah, I can see that yeah. through now. On the track guys. And then when they see a model, if they see a company that um, decides to do their own terrier, they get in quick and get in build theirs first, like you know. Well, it's a bit like the uh, Class yeah. Ninety One as well. Uh, Hornby said this year, "Oh yeah, we're doing a Ninety One." But I know the chap who was who was going to bring one out as well before yeah. Hornby even announced it. So it was a bit of a it's a. It's, Bully boy tactics, but, but they all, you know, all the same. I, I, we had the discussion in one of the other live chats. My argument with it all is the way Simon came across was so bang out of order, you know, saying, you know, that these companies like Hannitz and Rail bringing out their own, I could turn around and say to them, well, you're coming into my territory now. You know, you're making trains, you, you know. But Hornby can't use that argument and neither can... Airfix or Simon Cola because they are now in the retail market because they've got all their kit on a bloody website. There is, you know, yeah. so they did it first. They started doing the old, um, the old selling kits online direct, you know. And to be fair, it's, it, if you want the kit now, when it gets released, you do it online. But because the price of postage is so dear, you know, you've got to spend 50 quid. To get free postage, but it's forty. Yeah. It's four pound ninety five postage from Hornby. That's a lot of money, you know. I mean, it's a bit like um, I mean, Batman. There's another big yeah. railway com company. with proper spat their dummy out. So they've made a class sixty six now for probably knocking on fifteen yeah. years, which I've, it's a, it's a decent model, but it's starting to get a little bit long in the tooth. Hattons have come out and gone, right, here's, here's our Class 66 that we're going to build ourselves. Yeah. Uh, had, had it, not had it, sorry, Hattons are one of the big uh, big box yeah. shifters. So they, they, they take no end of stock. Batman spat their dummy out and gone to Hattons. Now you're, you're a dollar, let you stock any of our stuff. Yeah. Uh, that, no, no, sorry, it's... it's it's bully boy tactics for the big company. Yeah. Well, I went to get. I wanted to trade account with because um, I sell online. You see, of uh, uh, models, and I wanted. And they've got some models that I fancied, like you know, um, I think it's Italiari. They're um, they're the main distributor for Backman's are. So I wanted um, an account with them, and he, he, the guy wrote me a letter, and he, I said to him quite clearly, I'm an online seller of kits, and I sell quite a few kits. 
um, you know, can I, um, can I um, set up an account of you? And he turned around in his email and he said, we would love to have you on board. Um, what we need is, is your address of your physical shop and we want 70% of the floor space to be our stock. 70%? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit mad. Yeah, it is. No, I say it's, it's just it's just funny boy tactics. Yeah, because <laughs> Hannah's is massive, isn't it? Really. Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I, I, I had a day off. So I took a drive up there, and the size of their the size of their warehouse. Yeah, where their little shop is is, is ridiculous. Yeah, it is. Well, they 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 get all the um they 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 the distributors as well, don't they? They buy the stock in from the major companies, don't they? Then they dis oh yeah. yeah. But they won't sell to me either because I need to have a physical shop, which is ironic because all these physical shops do sell online anyway. So what's the difference? Yeah. That's what upset me. And in a, in a time at the moment when you can't go to the shop to buy a kit, you know, the only people who are going to be selling hobby, selling model kits now anyway is going to be Hobbycraft in the future anyway. I don't think model shops will last much longer, I don't think, not after now. It would be a real shame, but, you know. And, and, uh, oh, I hope not. There's one just opened up there, mate. <laughs> there is. Yeah, just fucking uh, Ashby Della Zeus, a little model shop yeah. appeared, which was quite uh, My quite closest long. one, believe it or not, is Jadlam on eBay. They're based they're based in Taunton. Oh, yeah. But you can't buy from the shop. You have to go online to buy it, which makes you wonder how they get their kit, because, you, you know, it's... They, they don't... They're apparently, you're not supply, you don't supply the market unless they, they've got a physical shop. So, yeah... I mean, I'm I'm quite lucky. So I'm oh, yeah. Midlands based, so I've there's there's two two shops in mm. Birmingham, and one is just yeah. like an Aladdin's cave. Of you walk it, I took my mate in there a few months back, and we must have spent an hour and a half just moving boxes, yeah. looking at stuff. It's just boxes on top of boxes. There's there's one in Ashby, and then uh next yeah. year's one's up in Newark. Well, I say well, we've got one where I am. Uh, we've got one in Exmouth, one in Seaton, because Seaton is where Pika Models is. Um, oh, um, and then it, yeah. um, next one's Bristol, really, for me when I got to go all the way up there. But um, yeah, I um, yeah, I do all right. You know, I, you know, I get I get models and flog them on. I've got a few wholesale companies I can use, but when it comes to distributors, they don't want to know me because I'm just small fry, which is a shame. I haven't got a shop, I haven't got a physical shop, just got an online shop, so yeah, right. Just in the chat, um, um, David, is 3D printers, yes, right, yeah, 3D printers plus the internet with loads of scale plans will be a result. James Mower says you can be scanned and re recreated in OO and other gauges, yeah. Um, David again says, in the future, you won't buy a model kit. You will buy a CD-ROM with all that's needed with your home 3D printer and PC to print all the bits off yourself, but still do the model making. Yeah, I can see a lot of that. But also, detail-wise, you will need to get photo etch. You will need photo etch if you want to get in real deep. Or you're going to have to be really, you know, some of the, some of the you know, the way that the, the um, injection mouldings work, some of, the, some of them are really good bits of kit, like... Um, what good or cheap IFV would you recommend in 35 scale? Oh, I don't know. I wouldn't have a clue. Anything 35 scale, you'd go to mini art, wouldn't you?
Yeah, I see your point there, Dem. Yeah, it does get expensive, 135 scale. Um, I I wouldn't really know what to recommend. I know mini mini are are really good with 135 scale, but I wouldn't I wouldn't. They are very expensive, indeed. Um, I have a friend who got around the backman issue of not having a physical shop by doing a deal with a local model shop. Yeah, that's a good idea. But I haven't got any local model shops around me. <laughs> well, not you know they are they were they are about an hour's drive away. What's local? An hour's drive. Oh, a bit of a miss. Uh, I don't know. Um, I have a friend who yeah doing it backman. But it's you know, they are good. They are good kits, though, aren't they? Back many are good trains stuff, isn't it? Uh, fairly. To be fair, they're all they're all, they're all got the good and bad points. Yeah. Biggest biggest problem with Batman is their wait times are ridiculous. Are they? Oh, um, I remember they uh, announced an MPV once, which is. Uh, it's a network rail train that uh, does all the uh, leaf blasting in the in the autumn time. Uh, they advertised it, so I put my deposit down at a yeah. local model shop. Six Never. years later, I actually uh, got my hands on one. Six years. So, so this this is uh, as a model railway. The, the annoying thing is everyone. Every, you read all the forums. Everyone has a go at the red box. Everyone has a go at the red box, going, "Oh, it takes that long for." things to come out and uh, this is wrong with it and that is wrong with it the blue box is just as yeah. bad if not a little yeah. bit worse sometimes and what about pico uh pico pretty good i mean majority of track and points and all that yeah. sort of stuff like yeah sundries track points motors everyone uses pico they do. I mean, I was going to uh, swing by on my way on holiday this year to, yeah. to Pico, pick up a load of uh, a load of track and points and that from my uh, yeah. new layout. But I've just found out just that my ho holiday has been cancelled, so I won't yeah. be going into Pico. <laughs> well, if you need anything, mate, give me a shout. I actually know the accountant for Pico as well. I used to play foot. I used to play football oh, with him on uh, on a Friday night. Oh, I don't tell me things like that. It'll get very expensive. <laughs> I keep meaning to go down there. I haven't been down there for years and years. You'll come down, free charge. I walked in there last time. I got a four-length HST yeah. for about 450 quid, and the other half had to drag me out before I brought it. See, I got into model kit with, with trains years ago because I had a family member who worked for Racial Plastic Models. Back in the day, yeah. Oh yeah. They're run by Pico as well now. Yeah, they're, they're the ones that book fast, like. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I've got like a a, a bit of flash right in the gap there, and I'm trying to get the bugger out, and it's an absolute nightmare. Right in between the two cockpits there. Where the gunner in the cockpit, I should say, isn't it? Uh, could get a bit out there. Oh, slice my finger off here. That's deadly, that is. I say one hour is about local. I say one hour <coughs> is local. About six hobby shops are located in an hour of me, which is quite lucky, I believe. Yeah, quite true. Um, David writes, I have a fantastic model shop. Five minutes walk from home. AC models in Eastleigh. Stuff with models, RC, trains, and people who know their stuff too. But do you really need the people in the shop who know their stuff? Doesn't everybody just go on YouTube and watch it now? <laughs> yeah, <You know>? that's right. <laughs> I think I've got all my experience from watching baggies on the top. <laughs> yeah. Don't learn anything off me. 
If you can all subscribe to Baggy's TMD on YouTube, it'll be great. He's a good lad. He knows his stuff. And if you need your plumber, if you need your boiler looked at, he's your man. Yeah. Come and join us. Yeah, Baggy's. He does a great quiz as well, which I didn't get any answer right, apart from the Dornish one. Go off the quizzes on... I'm doing a, a family and friends one on Friday, so there's a, there's a very good chance that I might be doing another <laughs> one on Sunday for the same questions that I'm asking. So just watch the last video, you'll get them all right. I've done 20 questions so far, but I've got another wow. 40 to think of yet. But while I'm while I'm wandering around at work, it's uh, helping me think of Fair enough, questions. mate. You can't say fairer than that, can you? Right, so that's that bit done. That's quite a lot of work. Let's have a look here. What have I got to put there? Part number eight. Really? That's a look. I can't forget we should really be looking at the instructions. I'm just randomly sniffing things Yeah, I'm just looking now. at how that fits on there. So that just is two little dots on the back there. But there is no dots for it to fit into. I suppose it slides around, doesn't it? Yeah. So you got the you got the two guns. Actually, I might do them after. Sod that. I might just put the. Uh... So there's a fair few rejected pin marks to sort out on this as well. There is, isn't there? Good old plastic putty, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Actually, I'm going to have to drill mine out. I've only got one pinhole here. Is that right? Or do I need two? Oh, no, there's, there's two, but one's a bit small. He hasn't gone, really? yeah, yeah, he hasn't gone through, has he? I need a, a pin vise for that one. Let's get the old pin vise out. Now, what size do I need? Made in China. Uh, Alex, do it. Um, this. Uh, they are both lines. Uh, I'm not doing mine for my railway. I don't know if uh, Moz is. Mine's purely because it's got an RAF Randall on it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I um, my train set. I need to relook at that. It's it's. I've actually because I've got it on a board and the board fits down on the bed sort of thing. So I've got to take the duvet, or oh, take yeah. the big um, duvet off and put it on the. But I haven't touched it for months now. It's just. Uh, there's more pressing things actually than me than me than me train at the moment. It's uh mind you I've enjoyed being furloughed. Uh ah oh, ah oh, yeah. Unfortunately I I didn't get that luxury. You know, you <laughs> know. Oh then there's a I mean the company I work for, they furloughed all the service engineers but kept uh kept the repair engineers on. Well they're the ones who make uh, they're the ones who make the money, innit? Yeah, but unfortunately, uh, how the government gave car MOTs a six months leeway, they didn't do that on gas servicing, so we were getting told, oh, don't go in unless it's an emergency, but we still need to do gas servicing. Yeah. Which is a bit, a little bit mad, really, seeing they give MOTs six months. Well, I think the one that scared me more is the lorries. Yeah, you know they um they definitely I think they they missed the they I think they dropped the ball there, and also the thing is that when you when you end up doing that, you know the lorry side of it, you know they have like six weekly inspections and stuff, you know it, it's you know you're talking lives here, you know what I mean, so yeah I I'm not convinced by that at all, giving away the MOT, but then again, it's um. Well, I just don't think. I think. I think at the end of the day, you know, certain things still need to be tested. You wouldn't have, you know, 
if they didn't cancel flights, you know, they wouldn't say, oh yeah, that's all right. The, 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 the planes don't need their, their six weekly checkup, like, you know, because before you know it, there'd be planes falling out of the sky, like, you know, it's a bit of a strange setup, really. Yeah, it's... I mean, I, I think we now, I think we now have, if we can't get into a property, yeah. we have three weeks grace. So, was it three months? It could be three months grace, but uh, it's not really my social housing boilers, a service. You meant to service every 12 months. Yeah. All social housing boilers get serviced every 10 months anyway. Yeah. And majority of the boilers are brand spanking new combi boilers, which mm. you, you don't tend to have any issues with. Yeah. So it's a bit of a, it's a bit of a weird one, but hey ho. Such is life. Yeah. Such is life. Go in with my latex gloves on and my face mask and half a, half a ton of depot wipes. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I, I found it absolutely amazing. Um, my I got a little puppy, right? He's an adorable little thing. I actually love him to bits. But he is a bastard, right? He is chewing everything, right? That dog has cost me £400. And, and he's he chewed through my AirPods, which meant, you know, he nearly had me my toe up his ass then. But then he um, he actually chewed through my glasses to the point of smashing the lenses on the glasses he chewed them that much so i had to go and s do you want I had to, to go you want some yeah. advice on dogs chewing right or yeah. that's oil or Vicks, Vicks. yeah we've heard of that put it on what put it on what yeah. you're chewing and it'll stop as well my, my parents used to do puppy walking yeah. for guide dogs and that was the first thing they told us like put Vicks on or all that's oil they don't like the taste of it well, we give him a bone now, so he's eating this. She's got his bone that he keeps chewing, and he, he, he um, but anyway, the, the argument I had was I had to go spec service for a new pair of glasses, right? Fair enough. So I rang up, booked an appointment, going at two o'clock. So I went at two, um, knocked on the door, and they said, Yeah, come in, but sit there. So I sat there for 10 minutes, and then she then said, Right, we need to pick some glasses for you. I've got your prescription here because you only had your eyes tested 18 months ago. Oh, yeah, that's fine. So we went around, and she was wearing a robe, a mask, gloves, goggles, and a face mask. All that in one, right? Like she was clearing up Chernobyl. You know what I mean? She was completely covered. <laughs> and before I had to point to the glasses, she would wipe the glasses with this, with this wipe, give them to me, put them on, take a picture, right, and then put them down. But as I put them down, she would then take them off then wipe them again. So it was like a four-stage process. Choose, wipe, put them on, picture, take them off, wipe, and that. And then when I wanted to go back and look at another couple of pairs that I'd, I had already done, she'd already wiped them, so why she had to re-wipe them again, I don't know, you know, and... Uh, I was like, yeah. But I still don't think you should be wearing gloves. I've got a real thing about people wearing gloves. You know. Because you're not killing because you're not killing the disease. Yeah. You don't wash gloves, do you? You wash your hands. So you're better off not wearing gloves. I mean, we with us we put a gloves on and go into the property. Yeah. Do our work, wipe down after ourselves, come out of the property. Mm take the gloves off, chuck them away, and then we wipe all our uh, equipment down yeah. as well. So, but it gets me, you see people driving around in their own car with a face mask on and gloves. Yeah. <laughs> There's no PPE in the world because they've ended, <laughs> ended up being used by yeah. us, like, you I know. Mean, I've, ne I've, never, I've never used so many Depot wipes and latex gloves in all my life. No. I think the last time I used a Depot wipe was when I was poorly. <laughs> but uh, yeah. yeah, it's the uh, the world we're in at the moment, isn't it? It is very much, yeah. <coughs> I just noticed this. There's not a rear wheel on the back. It's only like a skid on the back. Is there? That's interesting. Uh, you... oh, I bet there is. Yeah, there's only uh, a little skid on the back wheel. Oh done a, uh, a French spad that was in RAF markings and that was the same, we just got a little skid. Yeah. Yeah. 
I was like, it got an RF handle on it, so we brought it. I got a vintage spad. I did a review on it. It was a really nice looking kit inside. Revel, Revel Authentic Spad. Oh, yeah, spad about, 13, it was. Uh, I think mine was from about, yeah. It's probably it's probably the one I've got that's mm. been reboxed about three times from about the 60s. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit of context on why I'm RF mad. Me and my mate, are, we quite like our planes. We, yeah. we had a couple of drinks one night and decided that we'd see if we could build every plane that the RF had flown. <laughs> How far have you got? <laughs> Which is equated. Uh, well, we've worked it out as about 340. Mm. 340 planes altogether. So if we can buy a kit in one yeah. second scale, we go, we're going for it. I think I'm up to about... 20 wow. built kits now. That is good going. Yes, yes. Yeah, it's about it's about 20, 20 RF planes at the moment. I will actually do a proper video one day of yeah. show them all. <laughs> but it's uh, it's a little bit scary when you get the spad and then go and sit it next to an uh, A400M Grizzly. Oof. See, one thing I, I really embarrass myself with is not knowing all the planes of the RAF. I need to actually sit down and actually learn what every single plane of the RAF had and everything. Oh, I knew, I knew sod all until, until mm. we was proper starting yeah. getting into this. And then it's like, oh, oh that's yeah. what that plane's called. Embarrassingly, I didn't know the difference between Spitfire and Hurricane. Well, the Hurricanes I won didn't. the war for us, didn't it? Yeah, there was more hurricanes and spit. All the Spits glory. Got all the, all the glory. Yeah. Uh, this is just a pain to go. Well, you have to know what you're doing. Are you doing the uh, wings first? Are you? Yeah. Oh, I'm trying to stick the back bit off. You know, it's a little pins there. 24, yeah. 25, 22 to 25. The tiny little pins. Oh, I didn't spot them. Where are they meant to go? Ah. It's going to be fun putting them on. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. I'm going to eyeball it, I think. Yeah. <laughs> one bit more of kits if something works slightly wonky. 22 to 25. It's a lot of This yeah. is what I like jet planes. There's no propellers. <laughs> yeah. One thing. None Yeah, none rigging. rigging on it. <laughs> Riggins are oh, Riggins just so overrated. There's some really good stuff now where you, you, you put it all in and you let it loose and then you just put a little candle underneath it and it just like sucks it sucks it all together like so it's all nice and um taut yeah i've i've, mm. I've heard of that today i'm gonna have to give it a go so i've got well, i've got a gladiator to do i've got a fair few i've got a hayford to do as well that's all rigging i look at it so i'll oh, start it's that got rigging on it yeah freaking on the rigging i tell you But in all fairness, how many kits have you got? The RAF then? Have you got all the all the planes or? Oh god no, no no yeah you can't actually get them all. I've probably got out of the ninety kits I've got probably about thirty forty of them are uh, yeah are actually RAF planes. Like I say, the biggest the biggest is the E three D Century and the Grizzly. Yeah. Uh, the smallest kit I have to do now is it's probably actually this uh, this uh, Hawker Demon. Right. Hawker Demon. Has it really been an hour gone already? Crumbs. Mm. 
A little bit too long, that one. Cut him down! Just wondering if everybody's finding this entertaining. Here in three blokes, uh, two blokes here building a plane. <laughs> Are you all finding it all interesting, folks? Um, good evening, Mark Scale Models. Nice to see you. Um, history and scale. I do hope the shops will open in June. I'm running low on kits. Nothing like face to face. LOL. Yeah, David. I look. They, there's some of the model shops I've been to. The model guys there are just miserable old buggers. They really. So I've had some. There's some really miserable old buggers and. <laughs> And and the thing is, though, it's like you go in there and you're like, um, oh, I buy this kit, buy this kit. I said, uh, we do a deal on the Jaguar. Price on the box, mate. <laughs> you know what I mean? Price on the box. Yeah, I'm just saying, we do a deal. Look, I'm spending two hundred quid here. Are you gonna chuck in this, you know, a model? Yeah, I think that's that's I think that's a bit of a problem with the hobby as a, in yeah. general sometimes. It's especially trying to get trying to attract younger people into the yeah into the hobby. Yeah, yeah. it's only a demon. <laughs> it's only a 1962 kit. Close, close enough, that'll do. Let's bugger in. There he is. Is that gonna. Not quite there, was he? There you go. Oh, shit. Dropped it. I don't want to take any more of it off because it's. That's it. Yeah. Carpet Monster's got it. <laughs> Um. Uh, see, I'm I'm not doing that yet. I'm not I'm not bra not brave yet. I might do that after I paint it. I thought I'd do these now, give it some stability, so it does when it paints, it'll be all right. No, no, I just put half a gallon of uh, Tammy extra thin in there. Oh, you bastard fucking thing. Sorry, I do mean to swear. It's fucking popped out. It's just spent three minutes putting it in, and now it's just popped out. Get in there. You're all right. Swearing's a sign of it? intelligence. It is a sign of intelligence. It is. Coolio. I'm gonna put one in here. Cool, right. Look at that. Look at the back in there. That was tough getting them in straight, you know. Cut them at an angle as well. I just uh I'll put a dab of filler in there. I got so I forgot there's some bloody needle marks there as well. I didn't see them. Silly me, I wasn't paying attention. So I'll get some filler and put that in and just wipe that down when it's wet, I think. Make that flat. Then hopefully it'll spray over nice. But... Did you find your holes the in the right place? 
Yeah, I was talking about mine. The, the front one's actually a little bit. A oh, little what's bit that out, on the tail, can't... you mean? Yeah. Yeah, just a little hole in the fuselage for the. Uh, yeah, they're just the a little bit, but tail. I've just drilled them. I drilled them because they were missing. So I've drilled them and put them in. Ah, uh, so. Oh, come yeah. on, but they're out. Yeah. They look all right from yeah, this no. angle here. That they are, notice. you know, they're not perfect, <laughs> but they will. It's a one. It's not like a one forty eight scale, and it would matter, though, would it? One four, one seventy two doesn't really matter so much, does it? Ah, uh, a dinky scale. Raised panel lines as well. Shock horror. I'm annoyed at myself. I didn't didn't do anything with that. I let that dry. I think. I have to get going in a minute. It's bloody ten past nine already. Do they don't need drilling, will they? That would, no, they won't either. Yeah, one, two. Local kids, eh? Took their own. Uh, yeah. I suppose it's quite quiet. Oh, Is it? Yeah, well, yeah, because everybody's, you know, I have noticed because we live on the main street how different it is since the lockdown started to now. I don't think people care so much now. I think they're just back on the road. Yeah, I say being out uh, like uh, where I live, we got yeah. the A5 near us, so have to go down the A5 most days to get mm. to different jobs. And progressively, there's more and more cars appear. I mean, the first couple of days of lockdown, yeah, that's right, yeah. Bands. But there's a few, there's a few cars appearing there. No amateur SF F, SF F2. It's um, it's, it. it it's, it's 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 a staple really 1962 kits this is a classic from fx it's been going for donkey's years same tool they've never done anything with it and it is not too bad really once you clean it up a little bit what do you uh, what do you think to the uh i think it's a, i i think section. the idea is there but in my in my um review if they wanted to do it properly, they should have they should have bagged them. They should have bagged them. That's what they should have done. Oh, yeah. But no, they put them in boxes. I, you know, the decals are you know, the decals are going to make this plane look good, no matter what anyone says. It's the decals that are going to make this plane good. Um, but yeah, unfortunately, it's 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 one of them, and it they it's what are you paying for them? Five ninety nine a kit. It's probably cost them two quid in the decals. Uh... Yeah. I'll for I think I got mine because I wanted, I needed an extra three quid to get the free postage. I think I bought it then. <laughs> That's not. But it's it's I feel like it's a good way for Hornby to get because a lot of people were always begging yeah. for their older kits again. There were and it, like I said they've got the tools already done. All it's done is cost them. A bit of paper for yeah. a set of instructions, a box with mm. some nice box art on it, and a set of decals. And it's an easy, easy way of just getting models out there for people. Yeah, it's cheap, cheap as well. But you know, if they did it, what they should have done was add the paint to it as well. I think. Or oh, would you really want to use horn paint? Like that humble humble paint, paint. So? Oh, I'll stop using the You're gonna paint this <laughs> are you gonna get paint this with Tammy, are you? Uh no, I'm I'm big on So you paint with model air, do you? Oh you paint with uh, model um model paint, is it? Is it their model range? Yeah, it's the uh, model air I use, but uh my airbrush is broke at the moment, so I'll end up hand painting this one. Oh well. It just mm. goes on really well. Nice. Even as a even as a brush paint, yeah? Oh, yeah, because I'm okay. brilliant, there's a brush paint. 
it does. I'll say I stopped I stopped using mm. Humble a couple of years ago. Tried tried a couple of uh of the Vallejo stuff and haven't haven't gone back. I've I've started by attack paints. Okay. But uh I'm finding them a little bit yeah. of an arse, to be fair. I mean they're quite good because they've got all the REF mm. colour. I mean there's boxes yeah. boxes of them now. Down the side of me. The, like uh, all the full colours with all the mm. proper colours that you need, but they're, they're just a bit, they're a bit pants. They are. They're meant to be, they're meant to be for an airbrush. They're meant to be airbrush ready, but you still have to thin them down, and they just, they just don't work as nice as what okay. Vallejo yeah. does for me. I don't know. If, I don't know if that's me or I've sort of put them to one side. Unless unless there's like a specific colour. That I need, like I've done mm. the uh, yellow jack the other week, which needed a nice bright yellow. Yeah. So I used it for that, but if I say this, I'll just get painted in Vallejo aluminium. Okay. It gives, it, you know, it gives, does make you think a little bit. I, so I use Humbro. Um, I, use, I use the acrylic thinner with the Humbro, their own thinner. Um, when I brush paint, when I air spray Humbro, I use. Um, Mr. Colour Colour Leveling Thinner. Um, but yeah, other than that, so why? We've got a bit of an issue here. Does that go in there like that? So where does that fit in there? In he goes. Ah. Have I got a duff one? Get in there, you bugger. Mm. That's him. Get in. Ah, it's tight, that is, I tell you. That should fit in there, should it? Go on then. Push. Ooh. Ah, I'm going to leave that off, actually. I'm going to... Spray this first, I think, and I've got the wing on. Give it a spray with the old silver. Better do them as well while I'm here. And I think that's it for me tonight. How far have you got? Uh, just about to put the wings off. I've got the bottom, the bottom wing. I've got the bottom wing on. Yeah, I've done the tail. Yeah, just bring it up. Oh, out. The tail's a bit of a swine, but there we go. Yeah, no, bottom wings on, back wings on. About ready for a paint for all this, I reckon, once I've done all the ejected in marks. Not bad for Not an bad hour. Not bad for an hour, mate. Hour and, hour and a quarter. <laughs> you can't tell me that's blocked. Perfect plastic putty. Why is that not coming through? There he is. Quite tight, isn't he? There you go. My missus wants me to watch the next episode of that. Um, um, oh, what's that drama called? On. Um, oh, I'll think of it in a minute. Gangs of. Um, Gangs of um, uh, London on um, oh, it's quite good. It looks quite it's been quite good the last couple of episodes. Oh wow, well, more tail is really out. Is it bad? Mm -hmm. Is it? Uh, yeah, it's sort of. Oh, there we go. It gained a droop drying. Ah, be alright by the time yeah, I Yeah, give it. it a bit of fudder. <laughs> there we go. Perfect plastic putty. That stuff. Love it, mate, because 
if you use it right, you just paint it on, or you put it on, and then leave it to dry, and then you can just carefully with some white with some warm water, just right to basically rub off the excess. Ah, so get some of that. Yeah, it's only about eight quid a bottle. Apparently it doesn't shrink either. Do, 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 do. What are you doing tomorrow night? Back on air, finishing off? <laughs> <laughs> you on call at all a lot, or is it just uh, weekends you're on call? Uh, I've been on call for the past six weeks now. Really? Yeah, so luckily there's not a fat lot coming through apart from on weekends, but we're sort of covering uh, different zones. For yeah. All the different contracts the company's got so i'm literally covering by where i live it's, this will be my sixth week on it will people like you to keep the country going mate remember that we i'll, I'll tell you what, on thursday when i'm outside clapping for the nhs i'll clap for you as well right oh, cheers, mate. my mate who works in nhs he, he he's sick and he's sick of it now he said he said i've been doing <laughs> i've been doing this job for 15 years right why now? Why why clap me for doing it now? Do you know what I mean? And he's quite right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like uh, uh, I don't want no. to get political or anything, but the government's like, oh, this, this, and this. It's like, yeah, but you should have been doing yeah. this for years. It should. I mean, oh, they're all as bad as each other, I suppose. Yeah. But hopefully, this will sort of open their yeah. eyes up a little bit. And as I said, you know, I'm furloughed, but I know damn well that I'll be paying for this in years to come. I think everybody will be. Yeah. You know, they can't keep printing money. That's what America does, isn't it? They just print the money. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's things to be said about America, but yeah. <laughs> well, we're not too far from each other, really. Look at this. I'm, I'm at this point here now where... I've got the um, the lower wing on, the tail on, and I've put the britches on, and I've done the the panel mark, the um, the injector marks, the pin marks done, and you're about the same, aren't you? Yeah, yeah pretty much. That. I'm quite happy with that. Oh, we had eight in the chat, been watching all this time, so eight people, we've been entertained eight people at least for the last hour and a half. <laughs> I'm going to have to head off now because I've got to spend some time with my wifey and uh, and I'll be and I'll be back on tomorrow to do yeah. a bit more. If you're around tomorrow, come and watch us. If you're around tomorrow, mate, unless you're on call or something, see how you get on. and, and... Uh, Yeah, well, yeah to, let uh, me know. Let me know tomorrow, mate. Depends yeah, on how I work well, um, I think that's about it for tonight, gentlemen. Thanks for watching. Um, yeah, a Hawker monoplane. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. But, yeah, it's, it's all right. For, it's a 1962 kit, isn't it? I think it was. And the instructions have been updated. It's only six steps anyway, isn't it? Seven steps. Hawker. Yeah. I have a Vulcan by... Um, this company here, Cyber Hobby. Oh yeah, one to two hundred scale. It it always got me. So I've got all three B bombs: the Vulcan, the Victor, and the Valiant. Yeah, the Valiant has a hundred and three steps. The Victor has something like a hundred and thirty. Yeah, and the old tall Vulcan had sixty. Really. <laughs> Never done it, but yeah, this one here is 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 this box. It's a, it's a dragon one anyway. So a dragon are pretty good for kits anyway, aren't they? Uh, I think I've got their uh, uh, uh sea fixing to build. Yeah. 
Well, anyways, right, gentlemen, ladies, thanks for watching tonight. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Baggies, for dropping on the chat. Um, if it seems to be working, if I do, I'll send you this software. You go jump on your chat, and uh, we can do a live feed from there. <laughs> we can do that. And yeah. uh, If anyone hasn't subscribed to Baggies, go over to his channel and subscribe to him. He's a good lad. And um, if, if he's back tomorrow, we'll carry on with this. If not, I'll go back to doing my... Um, my other kit that I've got in the process of just finishing off the paint. Um, my experiment on getting the yellow decals white again is ongoing, but I'll talk more into that when I've done my first two days test on getting those uh, looking whiter than normal. But thanks for turning up tonight, Baggies. I appreciate it. And uh, oh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it, mate. And uh, we'll be on tomorrow. Cheers all. Thanks a lot. Speak to you soon.